What is good with y'all? WJ Game. Back again with another reaction for y'all. And yeah, man, I'm back again with another reaction. And I've been trying to record as constantly as I can for y'all to try to get these reactions out for y'all, man. So y'all do me a favor and smack that thumbs up, share the video, and subscribe so I could be able to keep dropping these reactions for y'all because I know somebody's messing with them, you feel me? That keep me motivated and that keeps me going when I know somebody out here is actually enjoying what I'm doing and what I'm reacting to and what I'm dropping for y'all, you feel me? But I appreciate all the support I've been getting on my channel, man. And yeah, as I can see by the title today, we finna be reacting to how North Korea finally made it impossible to escape hey man we don't know nothing about north korea we don't know nothing about this video i just seen it down my timeline and now i'm about to hop straight into this reaction and react to it you feel me for y'all but i'm not about to hold y'all for any much longer man and we about to hop straight into this reaction let's get it north korea is the only country in the world today where it's illegal for any citizen living there to leave without receiving prior permission from the state Doing so is legally considered to be treason by the North Korean government. And if you attempt to do so and are caught, you may be punished with a lengthy prison sentence in a hard labor camp or even sentenced to execution. Even moving about within North Korea's territory imagine, is difficult and strictly... Imagine judging somebody based on what they want to do, like... Yours is not God, bro. Why is y'all killing people just because they want to leave that country? Like, why is y'all killing people or imprisonment, imprisoning people just because they want to leave North Korea, bro? Like, if people want to explore the world, like, what you mean? So you're telling me if I have enough money, I can't even leave to go explore outside of that place? Huh. Crazy. By the state, as you need official documentation and permits just to legally move from one internal province of the country to another. North Korea is almost universally regarded by just about every organization in the world to have the worst human rights record on the planet with no contemporary parallel. All men in the country are forced into serving a minimum of 10 years in the North Korean army. Free speech is non-existent and the only media providers are all owned by the state. As recently as 2017, Amnesty International estimated there were around two- Look at these goofies, bro. Look how they marching, bro. <laughs> They're not goofies, but it's what they gotta do though, like. They telling me that you have you required to join the army once you turn probably ten years old. That's why. Thousand political prisoners being held in camps all across the country, who are often subjected to slave labor, torture, and summary executions. Not to even mention all of the other prisoners in the country. I hope they getting paid. Imagine you doing all this for the free. Like what? Ain't no amount of serving countries is worth that much. Like, bro, y'all already made a dollar bill. Y'all made the money bill. So y'all better pay me for these services y'all got me automatically doing. Because, bro, at this point, I'm enslavement. Like, this, this is not slavery, bro. I'm slaving at this point. Non-political related crimes. One can be sentenced to a life in prison in North Korea for merely being related to someone who actually committed a crime. Such as an infamous case that only recently came to light by way of the U.S. State Department of a two-year-old child who was sentenced to life in prison back in 2009 after his parents were caught by the authorities with a Bible in their possession. A piece of foreign... What? Yeah, since it's a two-year-old child to prison for life. So you telling me I'm two years old, don't even know what's going on with life yet. And then my parents go to jail and I get sentenced to jail too for life. Growing up in the imprisonment system. That is messed up, bro. Uh-uh. That is messed up. That have been illegally smuggled into the country. All foreign media and content from the outside world has been strictly outlawed within North Korea for decades, with various penalties being dealt out to anyone caught smuggling such content in, distributing it, or consuming it, up to and including life in prison and death. North Korea is one of only four countries remaining in the world that routinely carries out public execution of prisoners, with the only others being Iran, Saudi Arabia, and Somalia. It also has historically been extremely difficult for any foreigners to get permission to get into the country. And whenever they have been allowed in, they are permanently placed under intense levels of surveillance the entire time they are within, and only taken on highly curated tours where they are only shown what the regime wants to be shown. Sometimes foreigners who visit are even killed when they run astray of any number of the regime's arbitrary laws. No, bro. Remind me to cross these countries off my bucket list to visit because I don't need to go into no country that I can't even be free like the U.S. I see why a lot of people love the U.S. because they don't go off the rights for real. You feel me? I feel like we don't have 
completely all the rights that we supposed to have but at the end of the day it's way more freedom we talking about over here like we have way way more freedom it don't have to be a hundred percent freedom but we have way way more freedom they don't even have a five percent freedom at north korea it sounds like not even five percent bro so we telling me i'm constantly on lockdown constantly working for the government like bro at this point you're not even working for yourself you're working for the government constantly like no like Otto Warmbier, an American man who was visiting North Korea as a tourist back in 2016, who was arrested after allegedly attempting to steal a propaganda poster from the wall of his hotel, a crime for which he was later sentenced to 15 years of hard labor in a prison camp. He was returned to the United States. Bruh, they got this man dragging this man, bro. And it's like, you can't do nothing about it. You can't even try to fight them. It's one versus them, the, uh, the whole population. But that's messed up, bro. I would never go over there. Never. Like, I don't even plan on going to North Korea or wherever out. But, bro, if you traveling to a place and you get locked up for some stuff you probably didn't even do, that's messed up. No, bro. Now you trying to now you trying to give me my rights. Like, you trying to break my rights and what I can do. Like, I understand. But once you step into their place, it's all their rights. At the same time, bro, y'all got to chill out, bro. Chill out. Because we're not human puppets, bro. We're all supposed to get along and supposed to breathe this one anyway. And that's why this world's so messed up now. Crazy. It's a little over a year later in a vegetative state with little explanation and died only days later. As a result of all of this, North Korea has long been regarded as the most isolated and secretive country. Bro, this man died? Of all of this, Look at him. He don't even want to get locked up. And died He's crying. Only days later. As a result of all of this, North Korea has long been regarded- He's crying because they thought this man stole a poster. A poster. Something that takes paper. Something that they use our tree to make anyway. Well, not our tree, but this mother nature tree. Because this is not our tree. It's mother nature's. Something that y'all already using mother nature to make. And I'm getting locked up for life. Well, 15 years because of that. Come on, dog. That's messed up. Isolated and secretive country that exists in the contemporary world. And the most difficult country to get anything or anyone into or out from. Escaping out of the country or smuggling illicit material into the country has always been difficult for a wide variety of reasons, but it all starts with North Korea's rather unique geography. For many decades, the Kim dynasty and the country have worked tirelessly to essentially transform North Korea into a de facto island, completely separated and removed from the rest of the outside world. To their east and their west, this was already granted by geography in the form of the Sea of Japan and the Yellow Sea. Escaping out of the country across either of these seas is incredibly challenging because boats are very hard to come by within the country and the North Korean Navy maintains routine patrols all along the coasts, especially near to North Korea's southernmost territories next door to South Korea. South Korea itself, obviously, is the number one location the North Korean defectors attempt their escapes to, mostly because not only is South Korea a vastly wealthier and more developed country, but the South Korean government also officially considers that so them boys got way more money than North Korea. Cause they approximately make like 35 billion. The capital, 1,000. Population, 25 million. 73 years. This one you built, you live by 83 years. Population is 52 million worth. And then we got the capital, 35 grand. And eight point. 1.8 trillion that they are uh, apparently i guess that they are uh, profit so it's way wealthier so i go to you go to south korea not me personally because i'm not touching anything that's next to north korea because that sounds very bad but if you go you go to south korea you probably have more of a you know a great trip you could say all of the native Koreans of the entire Korean peninsula are her own citizens, including all of North Korea's 25 million residents. Any North Korean who can make their way into South Korea is automatically considered a South Korean citizen. And that alone provides an enormous incentive to leave. Of all the North Korean defectors who've successfully made it out of the country since the 1990s, 34,000 of them have found their way down to South Korea, compared to only around 1,000 in Europe, and only around 200 in the United States. But getting to South Korea directly has almost always been impossible because of the existence of the Demilitarized Zone, or DMZ, that runs across the entire length of the southern border from coast to coast. Contrary to how yeah. its name appears, this is the most heavily militarized border anywhere in the world. 
through which hardly anything at all is ever allowed to pass. There are tens of thousands of troops on both sides who directly patrol the numerous lines of walls, fortifications, and barbed wire in addition to around 2 million landmines. The North Korean Border Patrol has orders to shoot anyone who attempts to cross. There are 750,000 North Korean soldiers deployed within 100 kilometers of the border in the north, and another 450,000 South Korean soldiers, plus 20,000 Americans. sound like going over to South Korea, though. <laughs> Bro, it's either a one in a lifetime situation. It's either you're going to get there and you're going to live a great rest of your life. Or it's either that's probably your last day seeing either North Korea or going to South Korea. Because, yeah, them boys sound like they got a lot of stuff over there, bro. How many landmines they said them boys had? Them boys had everything. They got patrollers, landmines, barbed wire walls, like all that, bro. Soldiers deployed within 100 kilometers of the border to the south. Breaking through this extremely imposing obstacle to get directly into South Korea has always been very dangerous and risky, which is why very few have ever successfully managed to do it. Historically, the comparatively easier but still extremely difficult path to escape out of North Korea was by attempting a run across the northern border into either China or Russia. At the same time, this was also historically the easiest border to smuggle illicit contraband into North Korea from as well. You see, North Korea maintains an official military alliance with China, and while relations have often still been strained between the two, they are nothing like the outright hostility seen on North Korea's southern border. As a result, there is little need for North Korea to keep hundreds of thousands of soldiers deployed here, because the risk of an invasion coming from China is fairly minimal. Simultaneously, North Korea's border with Russia is very tiny, at only about 17 kilometers. And North Korea's relations with Russia are also similarly worn. So there's never really been a big need to park soldiers along the small border here to deter a potential Russian invasion. Moreover, the North Korean border with China is massive. It stretches and winds for more than 1,300 kilometers as it generally follows the Yalu and Tumen rivers, through rugged mountains and forests that are mostly very sparsely populated. Thus, for most of North Korea's history, this long border in the north with China has been lightly patrolled and guarded. And so it has been fairly porous and relatively easy to smuggle both goods and people across. This was especially true during the winter months when the Yalu and Tumen rivers freeze over, enabling defectors and smugglers alike to simply walk across them. Or during the summer months when the river's depths are at their lowest, enabling defectors and smugglers to just easily wade across them. But the biggest problem with this route for defectors was that once they crossed the border into either China or Russia, they still weren't exactly safe. Both Russia and China have extradition agreements in place with the North Korean government, meaning that any North Korean defectors they catch will be treated as illegal immigrants rather than as refugees and deported back to North Korea, where they will face immediate imprisonment and potentially even execution. That's why for nearly every defector who did escape across the border into China or Russia, the goal wasn't to stay there, but to eventually make their way into a neighboring safe country, which there are precious few of. Myanmar and Laos were always out because, just like China and Russia, they will immediately deport any North Korean defector they catch in their territories right back to North Korea. For the most part, that only left Mongolia, Thailand, or Vietnam as nearby safe countries the defectors could flee towards because, since South Korea considers all North Koreans to be their own citizens as well, these three countries will deport any North Korean defectors they catch to South Korea instead. So the plan for defectors was to always cross the poorest mountainous border into China, and then, eventually, gradually, make their ways to Mongolia, Thailand, or Vietnam, where they would then immediately surrender to the local authorities there and get deported on a plane to safety and a new life in South Korea. Defections out of North Korea only truly... Damn, bro. It's not like for you to take that risk and try to make it through China or Russia is very, like... If, you know what I'm saying? But then if you do make it to one of them countries and you make it over to the neighbors, which deport you back to South Korea, it's a new life. But at the end of the day, you got you taking a mad gamble. You feel me? It's either, you know, you're not going to come out back alive or you might just, you feel me? You might just get lucky enough to go to South Korea.
spike, however, in the 1990s after the Soviet Union collapsed at the end of 1991, which had been the primary financial supporter of the North Korean regime. Then, with its primary financial benefactor and supporter gone, and heavy financial sanctions placed upon it by the United States, Japan, and South Korea, North Korea suddenly found its economy and agriculture unsustainable. With very little money and hardly any ability to import farming equipment or fertilizer, with food imports from the Soviet Union gone, with exacerbating droughts and floods, and with a base of less than 20% of their land even being considered arable in the first place, North Korea couldn't acquire enough food to sustain its entire population. And the worst famine in the country's entire history followed. Because of the North Korean government's incredible levels of secrecy, nobody really knows exactly how bad the famine during the 1990s was. But estimates range from about 300,000 deaths on the lower end to as many as 3.5 million on the higher end across only four years between 1994 and 1998. With masses of people yeah. desperate to escape from the famine, defections out of North Korea consequently began to spike. And, sensing an opportunity to make some money, a class of entrepreneurial smugglers in North Korea arose as well, who began smuggling in much-needed items like food and medicine, but also illicit contraband like Western and South Korean movies, TV shows, and books. By the early 2000s, thousands of North Koreans were successfully defecting out of the country every single year. And the vast majority of them were escaping across the northern border into China, making their way eventually to Thailand, Vietnam, or Mongolia, and getting themselves deported from there to South Korea. The number of defectors steadily continued increasing year after year, long after the Great Famine had ended, until they reached a peak in 2009, when a total of 2,914 North Koreans successfully managed to find their ways down into South Korea. The largest number to ever defect in a single year since the conclusion of the Korean War back in the 1950s. Defections out of the country remained high in both 2010 and 2011, with over 2,000 taking place each of those years. But then, at the very end of 2011, something different happened. The man who had ruled North Korea as the supreme leader ever since 1994 suddenly died in December, and his son, Kim Jong-un, succeeded him. And ever since taking power back then at the end of 2011, Kim Jong-un has worked tirelessly to crack down on both defections and smuggling within his kingdom. Signal jammers began getting installed all <laughs> Money like down little rats. both defections and smuggling. in his kingdom. Signal jammers began getting installed all across the northern frontiers and remote mountain passes to block out foreign cell and satellite signals. Intelligence monitoring of phone calls in the northern areas were increased, while more border fences were being built up and patrols increased. Simultaneously, things were changing in both Russia and China as well. In 2014, Russia signed an agreement with North Korea that they would begin deporting any defectors they caught in the country back essentially eliminating Russia as a viable country for would-be defectors to escape into once and for all. Meanwhile, China began increasingly developing its own massive surveillance state apparatuses after the passing of the PRC cybersecurity law in 2016. Within just four years from then, by 2020, the Chinese had likely increased the number of their surveillance cameras operating all across the country to more than 620 million. More than 12 yeah. times as many surveillance cameras operating across the United States. Wow. Combined with increasingly rigorous monitoring of internet and cell services. Since China has always treated all North Korean defectors as illegal immigrants, these sweeping changes to surveillance in China made it far easier for the Chinese authorities to detect them in the country while they were trying to make it across to the safer countries in Thailand, Vietnam, or Mongolia and made their journeys significantly more dangerous and risky than they had ever been before. Mm -hmm, to compensate for the mm -hmm. increased levels the risk that we're developing. Brokers and human traffickers within China who often helped North Korean defectors escape began charging more and more money to do so. Back in 2007, the average price that a broker in China would charge to help a North Korean defector escape to Thailand or Vietnam was around $2,000. A lot of money for the average North Korean, but still theoretically doable. But by 2012, shortly after Kim Jong-un took power, the price had doubled to around $4,000. By 2015, the price the brokers were charging had doubled again to about $8,000. And by 2017, the prices were anywhere between $13,000 and $16,000 per each defector. Because most North Koreans earn less than $2,000 a year, saving up those kinds of sums to escape would take them years or even decades of scraping by to do. So it became no longer realistic for most to hire a broker to help them, unless they already had family members who had escaped before them, who could save up the money on their behalf with higher paying jobs in developed economies like South Korea. 
Thus, at some point in the 2010s, there became a point where the overwhelming majority of North Koreans could only escape the country if they chose to do so completely on their own, without any help from the outside, which would require them to travel on their own across the mountainous border in the north, and then somehow make it all the way through a massive country like China, with an unparalleled surveillance state, where they <laughs> don't know the local language at all, in order to get towards a safe country like Mongolia, Thailand, or Vietnam, and never get caught by the police along the entire way good mm. luck with that bro. yeah good luck with that bro i don't think you making it china bro they so advanced with stuff that they built it's just like bro you don't hear them boys got over six what is it six million or six billion cameras i'm like how did y'all install that much cameras all around the earth like that that is crazy bro that is crazy as a result, the trend of people successfully escaping out of North Korea began dwindling downwards with every passing year after Kim Jong-un took power, as it became increasingly difficult for people to do so. By 2019, only a total of 1,047 North Koreans managed to get out of the country to South Korea. Less than half of the numbers that had gotten out back at the beginning of the decade in 2010 and 2011. And then, beginning in 2020, the ability to escape from North Korea became even more bleak than it had been before. Damn. In January of 2020, only two months after the very first reported case of COVID-19 was made in China back in November, North Korea became the very first country in the world to completely shut down and seal all of its borders, citing its desire to keep the virus out of the country at all costs. Basically, all travel into and out of the country was shut down. Every international flight that North Korea had was immediately canceled. And nearly all foreign trade with the outside world was halted. And at first glance, it kind of makes sense why North Korea was so paranoid so early about the virus. This is a country where it is estimated that around 42% of the population are currently considered to be malnourished. One of the highest levels of mal... What does that mean, malnourished? What does malnourished mean in the comment, y'all? Let me know seen anywhere in the contemporary world and of course malnourished people are significantly more susceptible to the negative effects caused by COVID-19 than otherwise healthy people are. North Korea would only end up reporting its first confirmed case of the virus on the 12th of May 2022 and only three months later in August the regime had already self-declared its victory over eradicating it from the country with only a very minimal 74 officially reported COVID related deaths. The reality was almost certainly a lot worse than that. Anonymous inside doctors and sources reporting to the BBC this year claimed that about one in 550 people in Pyongyang actually died from COVID during that outbreak in 2022. If that source is accurate, which honestly, who knows? And if you extrapolated it out to the rest of the country, mm -hmm. it would suggest a potential COVID-19 related death toll in North Korea of around 45,000 orders of magnitude worse than the officially reported number of only 74. Though I suggest that that should be heavily treated with a grain of salt. But regardless, the North Korean regime was almost certainly genuinely worried about COVID-19 getting into the country. But they also have clearly capitalized on the pandemic as an excuse to finally finish locking down North Korean society and fully isolating it from the rest of the outside world. In August of 2020, the regime established so-called buffer zones on their northern borders with China and Russia. While firm orders were given out to North Korean soldiers patrolling the borders to unconditionally shoot anybody on site attempting to either enter or leave without permission. A shoot to kill order that evidently continues to remain in force more than three years later now today. Moreover, wow. the North Korean regime seized on the excuse of protecting the country from COVID-19 to construct a series of vast new fortifications all across the borders with China and Russia. Satellite imagery has revealed hundreds of kilometers worth of newly constructed walls, fences, barbed wire, and guard posts being constructed all along North Korea's northern border since the pandemic began, all of which have seemingly sealed off nearly all of the historical mountain passes and routes that defectors and smugglers alike have taken into and out of the country for decades. The once porous northern border has since become mostly solid, and hardly anything or anyone is crossing it at all now. But building out these vast new fortifications mm -hmm. in the north with strict shoot-to-kill orders is not the only way that the regime has been making it increasingly impossible for any of its 25 million remaining subjects to escape. Much harsher restrictions have also been put into place on domestic travel within the country, meaning the North Koreans need proper authorization and paperwork simply to travel from province to province. Hmm, and that's messed up. It's like here in Florida, you needing paperwork to travel from here to Miami. 
or from Miami to West Palm Beach or from West Palm Beach to like a Key West. Like you needing paperwork to travel from city to city, you know what I'm saying? And it shouldn't be like that. Like why I need paperwork to travel from district to district? That's messed up. Caught without them, it's straight to one of the country's many prison camps. In December of 2020, the North Korean regime passed a new law called the Reactionary Ideology and Culture Rejection Act, which heavily criminalizes receiving any information or object from the outside world and bans anyone from possessing a non-government sanctioned cell phone. Under this new law, smuggling and distributing foreign videos or books into the country can be punished by a public execution. Even simply being caught watching a foreign video or reading a foreign book can be punished with a 10 wow. year prison sentence to hard labor under this new law. Historically, foreign films and shows like South Korean K-dramas or dubbed American movies were smuggled in from China across the northern border on micro SD cards and then sold and watched in secret. But evidently, since the new extremely harsh laws were passed at the end of 2020 and the northern border got much more heavily sealed, these smuggled foreign films and movies into the country have virtually stopped entirely. Mm -hmm. Moreover, defections out of the country have virtually ground to a halt since the pandemic began as well. In 2020, there were only a grand total of 229 successful defections out of the country to South Korea, a tenth of the amount that were seen only a decade previously. Mm -hmm. And then 2021 and 2022 saw even less, with yes, only 63 bro. and 67 successful, successful defection attempts taking place so throughout the entire- if it's only 63 and 67 successful, what happened to the other percentage? We don't obviously know how much people are trying to cross over, but if only 63 and 67 made it, how much died? That is, North Korea ain't no joke, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to go over there. <laughs> years, the lowest levels ever seen in North Korea's entire history as a state since 1948. And so far this year in 2023, the trend is looking to be pretty similar as the entire first quarter between January and March, some of the best months to escape when the northern rivers are frozen over, only recorded a paltry 34 successful defections taking place. All of this is in comparison to the wow. thousands of successful defections. Wow, that is crazy if y'all could see by this chart bro from 05 06 07 08 09 that's when people really was trying to like you know move out of that country but as the times go by this joint decrease 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 like decrease it's to the point where like 39 2024 is probably nobody trying to cross over from anywhere because they get shot Oh, were taking up. place every single year back in the early 2000s and 2010s. North Korea, in effect, has become the largest and possibly most successful prison in all of human history since 2020. Wow. But it isn't just the new laws and the new border in the north they've built that is all contributing to this. In truth, they're all merely a component of Kim Jong-un's grand concept of transforming North Korea into a... Tr <laughs> this man like... Look at that smile, girl. He can't. I feel like every time I see him, he's just always smiling, bro. Is he always just smiling, bro? Or is it the clips that I be seeing? Like, he's always so joyful or whatever. Yeah, shit, I be joyful too. Did he damn near what? He damn near, you could say, I'm not gonna call him a god, because he, he's not my god or anybody else god out here, but to North Korea, bro, he probably is like a god. It's him that's rude, like, the whole, the whole, whole country he rules the whole north korea bro so it's like everybody looks up to him he caused the shot he caused everything he he say the don'ts and the do's so i would say that's pretty that's pretty like you know closed digital state wherein the digital realm as well as the physical realm within north korea are each completely isolated and separated from the rest of the world this has been a long time project of the north korean state in the making the phones that you can get in North Korea, for example, work very differently than the phones you're used to. State-sanctioned phones from North Korean state-owned companies are the only ones that you can legally possess. They can't connect to the internet, and they can't make international phone calls outside of North Korea. So Moreover, what's the point? They have state-sanctioned software installed on them that can... Yeah, so what's the point of if you have a cell phone and you can't do nothing but inside North Korea? I guess they're trying to have a limit of how what you can watch and where you can watch it. And it's just not it, bro. Bro, people don't want to see everything that's just going in North Korea, bro. 
dying. Like, bro, it's, imagine you waking up and it's always just North Korea, North Korea, North Korea. You so trapped in just that one place. You don't even know what's going on outside of the world. You don't even know if it's outside world. You don't know none of that. You just know about North Korea. And to a lot of the North Koreans, bro, that's really like, they're in prison. You don't have to be in prison over there to be in prison because you're really in prison possibly be removed and that disables all foreign files, apps, clips, and text or sound files that were not created on North Korea's own state-owned operating system called Red Star. These North Korean phones will also continually and randomly take screenshots of messages and activity history that cannot possibly be deleted. And inspections of the phone are mandatory by the North Korean police. In essence, these phones are only usable within North Korea and can only be used in ways that the North Korean regime deems acceptable. But foreign-made phones from the outside world smuggled in across the northern border were always problematic to the Kim regime's desire for this truly closed-off digital state. Foreign-made phones could actually make calls to the outside world. And they could contain outside foreign-made files like videos, mm -hmm. texts, and sound. Mm -hmm. They were big business for a few entrepreneurial smugglers. Because using a foreign-made phone might be the only way that a family within North Korea could contact a relative of theirs who had attempted an escape previously. It might be the only way to have ever known if your relative was still alive or dead. Many North Korean families would thus save up enormous amounts of money to meet these smugglers for the chance at a phone call to the outside or a chance to view or read something from the outside. But no longer, by slamming shut the border and increasing the harshness of its laws, the North Korean regime has probably destroyed this smuggling process that was undermining its closed digital state ambition once and for all. And as the risks for getting defectors out have increased, so have the prices that the brokers are charging to try and help. As of 2021, the average price the Chinese brokers were apparently charging had increased more than $21,000 per defector. Bro, a full 10 times the price from his You're recent... telling me just for me to reach outside of North Korea, I'm paying $20,000. Just for me to get one phone call, $20,000. Is only 2007. And after North Korea became extremely sealed off from the outside world in 2020, the regime also began refusing all the. So, North speaking of North Korea, right? The leader of North Korea. So, do we have a son? And if he do, who is going to become the next leader when something happens? I feel like if he doesn't have a son, because I don't know much about him, bro. I don't study none of them boys. I don't do none of that. You feel me? I stay in the U.S. <laughs> That's where I'm at, the U.S. But, um, I feel like. With them is if you don't have a son, I feel like it's his closest companion that will get to be the leader of the North Koreans. Yeah, man. I don't know much about him and I don't know if he have a son, but I'm just curious on who's going to be the next leader after, you know, he's out of office. Korean defectors from being returned who had been caught across the border in China, officially citing fears that they might bring the COVID-19 virus back into the country with them. There may currently be as many as 1,000 North Korean defectors being held in prisons within China near to the border, waiting to be sent back. Another thing, okay, so if China and Russia has a treaty with North Korea, can Chinese people or Russian people come inside North Korea? Or are they not allowed to come in North Korea? Because if they're not allowed to, them boys really being protected by China. Because if them boys can't come inside North Korea, they only really just always inside North Korea. And it's like they trapped, bro. The Kim regime, when they finally accept them, where they will almost all certainly be sent to prisons and or be executed. But there is no certainty right now as to how much longer North Korea will remain even more isolated than it had ever been before. It could all be the new normal state of affairs for the elusive regime. And those hmm. 1,000 defectors sitting in China may be trapped in a limbo for a very long time. Yeah. And the 25 million people remaining within North Korea may as well from now on be basically stuck within a completely separate universe. The black mm -hmm. hole on the world map that North Korea has become since 2020 has made it effectively impossible for nearly anyone within to get out or for anything from outside to get in. Aided by North Korea's own unique geography and the Kim regime's own ruthless application of laws, fortifications, and new digital technology. Everything from the outside world is now thoroughly blocked within North Korea, as it has never been before. 
but it is also far from the only country that is placing restrictions on foreign media. American websites like Google, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Wikipedia, Reddit, and dozens of others have been blocked in China for years. But now, popular Chinese websites and apps like TikTok are beginning to be similarly blocked in the United States. Just last month in May of 2023, Montana became the first U.S. state to pass legislation banning TikTok everywhere on all personal devices for everyone. Yeah. I don't know people from Montana probably mad at their life, bro. They was probably so stuck on TikTok for that 2020 COVID. But damn, bro. That is crazy. They really banning TikTok. It haven't happened over here yet, but of course it's not just going to happen like right away, bro. They probably going to start with different states, different states until there's everywhere, you know what I'm saying? But that's messed up, though. State. A ban set to take effect in January of 2024 next year that'll block access to TikTok for all of the state's 1.1 million residents. Additional U.S. states can end up following Montana's decision, and there are many representatives and senators in the federal government who would like to see TikTok banned outright nationwide. The internet should be exactly the same no matter where you Man, are. Man, why they doing that, bro? They just mad because TikTok is really getting these content creators out there and they really making them some money. And you feel me like... TikTok be on BS sometimes because when I promote my content on TikTok, like people are saying, like, of course you gotta be consistent on there, but sometimes I feel like the people be like, oh, post a thing on TikTok, yo, progress not gonna come right away, you feel me? So it's like, don't listen to people saying, oh, TikTok gonna blow your thing up. Bro, you still gonna have to put in that work. You still gotta be consistent. You still gonna have to post for you to get views. Cause TikTok be on some grit stuff where they'll block your videos for no reason. Shadow ban you, bro. Literally, shadow ban you. Don't even push your thing to the For You page. So it's like, I don't think TikTok is the same TikTok they used to be. But yeah, you could still promote your stuff on there. But you know, back in 2020, they was really, 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 really pushing that content out there. Cause everybody was inside the house. But now, TikTok. <laughs> Ah, uh, you would be surprised if they even push you out to the For You page. But that's simply not the case. Even if you're living in a place like the United States, Europe, Canada, or Australia, pretty much everywhere, there are an increasing number of censorship firewalls. Legislation, like in Montana, limiting where you can access what. And different versions of websites with different prices, depending on the country or state you're in. This is most apparent when it comes to booking flights, hotels, and holidays. Companies will use cookies to adapt their services offered to you, like increasing the prices for things when you return to their website in the hope that you'll impulsively make a purchase out of fear of the price rising once again. Sometimes, airlines and hotels will offer cheaper ticket prices to people in their home countries. While alternatively, they may also spike prices if interest from the same country suddenly increases all at once. Like during specific holidays in the United States or UK that aren't holidays somewhere else. Companies will also adjust their prices based on the user's country because they assume that someone from a wealthier country like the US, UK, or Canada will be able to afford to pay higher prices. And this is where using a VPN like today's sponsor NordVPN can come in handy and and literally save you hundreds in airfare tickets and holiday bookings. Once you're signed up for a subscription and installed the NordVPN app on your device and launched it, you can shop and you as a and and compare their price with the US VPN through this one talk ban I a guarantee and for a limited time when you use my link NordVPN dot Well that's it for the video y'all he just has little um promotion ad at the end right there but yeah man let me know what y'all think of the reaction bro hey bro i don't think north korea is the spot you want to go at because <laughs> boy you're not making it out alive you know what i'm saying they them boys gonna lock you up and you don't want to do that bro there's other countries out there you could visit anyway rather than that place like it's not like they're it's a hell hole over there. I ain't gonna cap. You feel me? It's like it's a lot going on. And them boys don't want you to escape. They want you to stay isolated so you all know what's going on outside the world. But we all know that once you start knowing what's going on outside the world, you learn all the truth. And you see a lot of stuff, obviously, that's good, you know, to mentally, like, get you prepared for what's going on around the world. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, man, the Bay governor don't even want them to see outside the world. They want them to stay isolated, man. But... It's very tough though. I don't think anybody wanna visit North Korea after this video, you know what I'm saying? But 
If y'all enjoyed the video, bro, let me know what y'all think in the comment down below. Let me know what kind of reaction y'all want to see. And yeah, man, don't forget to keep showing the support y'all showing. And yeah, so I can keep driving more content for y'all. Because I enjoy making these content. But I got to know y'all watching these contents. So I can keep dropping them, bro. You feel me? But yeah, I appreciate y'all for tuning in once more again. If you are new to the channel, smash that thumbs up. Share the video and subscribe for more reactions like this one. For all my returning subscribers, bro, y'all know I appreciate all y'all for coming back and checking me out, man. Make sure y'all hit that post notification so y'all can know when I post and y'all don't stay clueless of when I post, you get what I'm saying? But, man, I really appreciate y'all for tuning into the reaction once more. I'm gonna catch y'all on the next video, man.